So most of the cinematic videos like these that you see on my Instagram and my TikTok, I've edited it with CapCut. CapCut is really perfect for this kind of quick social media content especially. Sure, I use DaVinci or Premiere for more serious projects, but really for a mobile workflow, for a quick, intuitive, easy to use software that is also free, CapCut really is unmatched at the moment. So in this video, I'll go over the entire workflow and how I use CapCut all the way from, you know, cutting the footage to music beats, transitions, color grading, audio effects, all that stuff from start to finish is gonna be covered in this video. And I don't wanna get into the debate about what is the meaning of the word cinematic. In this context, I just use anything that is visually pleasing content, um, as opposed to like memes or vlogs or tutorials. I'm sure you know what I mean, even if it's not technically correct. There's actually a desktop version of the app as well. I played around it with a little bit. I think where CapCut really shines is on the phone. So that's where we're gonna do the tutorial. It's fine on the desktop, but I think if you're gonna edit on the desktop, it makes more sense to use a more serious software in that case. Anyway, let's get into it. Obviously, the first step is to import your footage. I've already chosen some footage. It helps to edit similar kind of footage into one clip because, you know, then it's very easy to create it. I've already selected these clips on my timeline. Then I will go and simply drag and drop the best parts of the scenes. Once that is done, we can do a basic color grade. This is my color grading workflow when it comes to CapCut. So there's two ways to color grade on CapCut. You can select an individual clip and do adjustments there, or if you don't select anything, you can just go here, do the adjustments, and then do general adjustments that will create an adjustment layer that you can then drag over the whole um, timeline. So what I like to do in the beginning is to just kind of do a generic adjustment that will hopefully work for most of the clips for the timeline, because I like to get a general sense of what my footage is gonna look while I'm editing it. So this is the first thing that I do. So we're just gonna go to brightness, increase brightness a little bit, because that's usually something that I need to do for night footage because of the way that the iPhone footage works. All these clips are shot on the iPhone 13 or 14 Pro Max, by the way. Then I like to go to graphs to change the color, introduce a little bit of blue tint in the highlights to make it colder. Again, this is just a generic edit for everything. A little bit of vignette for night footage is something I like to do. A little bit of sharpening just because, you know, it's mobile footage that is going to be exported in HD quality and then posted on social media. So sometimes sharpening is a good idea, especially for night footage. Other times you might want to go the other way. Don't add sharpening because iPhone footage tends to be pretty sharp to begin with, but that is something that depends. For nighttime, I like to add it. Exposure on CapCut is weird. doesn't really do all that much. Don't usually touch it. Then I would maybe further fine tune the, um, the color of the image with temperature, just go blue, uh, screw it. And the hue changes, obviously the hue. And that's the initial draft edit that we're gonna begin with. And then we're gonna go and adjust this adjustment layer throughout the entire duration of the clip. So you can see it changes. And for now, I wouldn't worry about it being perfect on each clip, we're gonna fine tune the color grade later. Now, when you edit social media content, you might wanna edit it to a song. Because I've been editing CapCut videos for a year, usually for Instagram or TikTok, where the song is a very main part of the uh, whole thing. I've kind of learned that certain songs just have a certain rhythm. So either it's a cut every 1.5, 1 or like 0.8 seconds. So I don't necessarily even need to always import the song into CapCut. I can just kind of intuitively edit and then make small adjustments because CapCut is easy to use and it's fast to export another slightly different version if you need it. Either way, if you want to import a song to guide you make the cuts, the easiest way that I've found to do it is to simply go over to Instagram and screen record a song and then go to CapCut, go to the go to audio, extracted, and then select your screen recording from your gallery, and then it's gonna import that audio into your timeline. And you can then see much more clearly where you would want to cut in accordance to the beat. Furthermore, if you really wanna make it 
a little bit easier for yourself, you can just add the cut points to the beat automatically through here. Again, with experience, I found that this doesn't even become that necessary after a while. But one tip is if you do this, if you edit with the song in your timeline, mute it before you post it on social media. So before you export it, mute the song so it's not actually in the audio anymore, and then go back and select it on TikTok, on YouTube Shorts, on Instagram again, because this helps you prevent copyright issues and gives you a little boost with the algorithm as well. Now, one of the things that can really make your footage seem much more professional, much more cinematic, is audio effects. First thing, if you have a bunch of clips that you recorded with your phone, it's probably gonna have built-in audio already. So what I like to do is either go and adjust the volume to either very low or nothing at all, and then just scale it over the entire timeline with the loudness adjustments. So every clip becomes either totally silent or at least very subtle because it can be a little bit distracting if the audio is too loud. And then we can go and add some audio effects directly from the app in the audio panel in the sounds and to just type whatever we want, usually with the uh, additional disclaimer that it's a sound. So if you want rain, do rain sounds, otherwise you're gonna get songs. So you can select and check out a couple of different rain sounds and if it sounds good, just click it and add it to your timeline. Once you have a sound, you can drag it and you can add fades and fade outs to make it seem more natural and smoother. You can adjust the volume and you can add more effects such as whooshes when the transition comes in and all kinds of different effects, like literally anything that you can see, just search for the corresponding sound effect and that is gonna make a big difference in the outcome of your video. In the next step, we have graphics. And by graphics, I just mean text titles. And on CapCut, obviously, you can just add text and you can add a cool a cinematic title. I'm gonna do Tokyo Rain for this one. And the nice thing about CapCut is you can actually download and add your own custom fonts to make your footage stand out even more. It's better than using, you know, the default font. So you can go add font. I've already added a couple. So I like Metropolis. It looks very cinematic. And then you can further go and, you know, edit fonts. I, this is pretty standard stuff. But you can even do stuff like spacing to make the spaces between the letters bigger. And that is something that movies do often. So all in all, looks more cinematic. And if you Google around, you can find a lot of cool cinematic fonts like Metropolis and others. Now, if you want to animate the text, there's actually a couple of decent effects. You want to be careful about not selecting the most crazy ones. There's a couple of good ones, like the typing effect that looks very natural and you can adjust the speed. But I wouldn't choose the, the crazier ones because those are pretty much the opposite of cinematic and they look a little bit, you know, amateurish. When it comes to transitions, you want to be a little bit careful about not going too far when it comes to CapCut because this is one of the limitations of the software. You can't do as cool of a transition as you can, like Adobe Premiere Pro, for example. So I would avoid checking the basic animations. They look very amateurish, very social media, not very cinematic. The only transition that I really like to use in CapCut, I'm gonna go to another clip to show you, is speed ramps. So speed ramps, you would go to speed, curve, and then add either a flash in or a flash out. But even then, if you do add them, they're usually a little bit too fast. So you gotta adjust it to be a little bit more subtle by playing around with these curves. There's a couple different ways to achieve pans and zooms digitally on the app. I would not use the actual animation effects in the animations panel. Instead, I would use keyframes. So you can just go to your clip, click the little keyframe button. That is the starting point and then go to the end of the clip, try to go as close to the end as possible, and then you can zoom in, and then it's gonna smoothly zoom into the point that you've selected. Try to be as accurate as possible, getting to the closest to the end as possible, otherwise there's gonna be some weird delays. But that is much smoother and much better than using the built-in animations, like I mentioned. So now that we've covered everything else, we need to do the refined color grades. Now you could do this in the beginning as well, it doesn't really matter when you do this, but as mentioned, we have the overall adjustment layer. We could even delete it and adjust it a little bit if you want to individually color a whole clip if it is totally different from you know everything else. But because this that I'm showing you here is all similar footage shot on the 
same day in the same conditions, we can just make individual adjustments. So as you can clearly see, the first clip here is very much underexposed compared to the others. So I would boost the exposure a little bit and maybe add a little bit of color to just this clip. Another thing you can do is also go to HSL and edit individual colors of individual clips. I have another video on this channel where I cover color grading in slightly more detail than here. Like I mentioned, it's kind of a complicated topic. The second clip looks fine. Third clip, or maybe second clip is a little underexposed as well. You can go to brightness instead of exposure if you want to adjust the exposure of clips because exposure on CapCut is just weird. Fourth clip, same thing, adjust brightness. Fifth clip, adjust brightness. Probably gonna make the initial adjustment more bright rather than this one. Maybe go slightly the other way, maybe not. Maybe that's already good. Then we can click full screen and go through the whole edit to see how it looks. After everything is done, the last part is exporting. Now this depends entirely on your usage case, but I assume you're doing this for social media, for Instagram, for TikTok. And the thing about those platforms is that they downscale everything that is uploaded on there to 1080p anyways. To HD format. So if you actually upload higher quality footage, counterintuitively, it gets ruined by the app and it actually becomes smudgy and low quality. So you kind of preemptively kind of destroy your footage and go to 1080p. The rest of these, usually I just leave it on recommended, except for smart HDR. You don't want to click that because that can also mess with the colors sometimes. So 1080p, 30 FPS. You might wonder why 30 instead of 25. Well, for some reason, Instagram and TikTok use 30 FPS, so that's what you want to use. And the code rate, I just go recommend it because, again, I'm afraid that if I go too high, then maybe Instagram will mess up my footage. And these have been proven to work pretty well because, like, almost every day, I get questions in my DMs about how do you get your footage to look so sharp on Instagram. And the simplest way to say this is 1080p. Ruin your footage before Instagram does and your footage will look better than almost anybody else's. And that is all. Check out the other video if you want to know more about color grading and uh, see you next time.